working side by side. One, not paying attention to what the other is doing and leaving a sharp instrument open and in a bad location. Call this accident a lack of awareness or haste. We call it preventable. The following short clip shows the proper use of an engineering method to prevent hand injuries. Our first and foremost way to eliminate hazards associated with handling heavy items is best shown here by the night labor employee. The employee is using a mechanical dumpster to dump a heavy cumbersome trash truck into the compactor. The use of a mechanical aid can be used to prevent excess materials handling. It is recommended as long as the operator has been sufficiently trained on the equipment. In this example, the day labor employee is using the cardboard baler. This cardboard baler eliminates the manual work involved in trying to band the cardboard by hand. When using such heavy equipment, you must follow proper procedures to prevent amputation and hand crushing, as well as other hand injuries. Machinery of this type has preoperative inspection procedures that you must follow. Make sure that the standard operating procedures that accompany such machines that you are operating have been read and that directions have been followed. In this clip, the sheet metal shop is showing the incorrect way to drill a piece of metal. First check the SOP manual and become familiar with the hazards involved this mechanic remembers to check his drill bit for sharpness. To observe the speed dial on the housing and to secure the stock item
firmly in the vice apparatus. Additionally, the mechanic will add a non-flammable oil to assist in cutting. You will notice that the mechanic is not wearing gloves. Gloves are not recommended in the SOP book for this job task because they may get caught in the rotating mechanism. In this video clip, the furniture division material handlers are removing a chipped glass top. When handling glass, it is important to clear a path to and from your destination and to make sure that all tripping hazards are removed and the doors are wedged open. Good communication is essential as well as the use of the proper PPE. These workers proceed with a unified motion along the clear path and place the item on the slant truck. Job site awareness is also important to prevent hand injuries. In this example, the night custodial employee is wearing his gloves to guard against mild irritants that may be present. In addition, it is important to not place your hands in the trash because of unforeseen items that may puncture or cut your hands. The following example illustrates the use of lockout tagout procedures as a way to prevent hand injuries. In this example, the two air conditioning mechanics are checking the SOP for lockout tagout procedures. They are filling out the necessary tags for the equipment, then they lock out the power and place the tag on the equipment. The employees then inspect the motor for rotation prior to removing the guard. This process of lockout tagout procedures is a good example of how following a procedure reduces or eliminates the chances of an accident. Electrical shock and ensuring that no equipment can be restarted are the main reasons for having a safety process such as this in place. Electrical shock can be damaging to hands and also poses a more critical life-threatening danger. As part of the job hazard analysis, this paint and refinishing employee is checking his material safety data sheet to determine the caustic nature of the stripping chemical that he will be using.
per the job hazard analysis, he will then wear the appropriate gloves to ensure that he does not receive a chemical burn to his hands. As an additional protection to prevent the burn farther up on the arm, the technician also employs the use of a protective sleeve. A job hazard analysis such as this has been created for every job task in each shop and should be referenced when performing such tasks. This short video clip shows the upholstery division carpet installer wearing his PPE. Kevlar gloves should be used around glass, jagged metal, splintered lumber, or when using a sharp instrument like this carpet upholstery razor knife. Additionally, the employee carefully changes to a new blade and disposes of the old blade in a Senate provided container. In the following clip, the plumbing division employee is wearing leather gloves that are rated for the type of hot work that he is performing. It is important to be sure to wear gloves all throughout soldering or welding processes since the finished product may still be hot long after bonded. It should be mentioned that the employees also completed the proper burn permit and notified the appropriate personnel. A fire watch person with a fire extinguisher is also present off screen. Housekeeping and machine guarding are other priorities in conducting any task and preventing injuries. In this example, we see an employee of the woodcrafting division making sure that his saw is free from any debris and that the area around his equipment is free of dust. Removal of these types of tripping hazards will reduce the possibility of slips and subsequently hand injuries that accompany them. This clip is also a good example of guarding one's equipment. Guards should never be tampered with or removed. Standard operating procedures should be referred to when setting up new equipment and the guard that goes with that type of equipment. Workplace ergonomics are also very important in preventing job-related injuries. In this example, the Inventory Management Division employee is first shown with a workstation that is a poor example of ergonomics. The angle of the keyboard tray and the wrist should be ergonomically comfortable so that the wrist sits above the keyboard. Additionally, the chair should be adjusted so that the hands and arms are at the proper height. Furniture division personnel can provide recommendations and instructions in the use of different styles available to achieve workplace ergonomics. When heavy vibration is a frequent part of your job, it can be detrimental to tendons, joints, and other soft tissues. In this example, an employee of the masonry division is drilling marble and employing a type of safety glove used for anti-shock. These anti-shock gloves are good for use with buffers, hammer drills, and jackhammers. 
Standard operating procedures will give the worker any pertinent information as to the durations of exposure, pressure limitations, and other job hazards. One of the last things that we must state is the need to communicate with your fellow employees as to the task that you are undertaking. This is an example of supervisory assistance. In this segment, the supervisor of the subway division and one of his mechanics go over the operating procedures of the lift. These mechanical aids that are in place here at the Senate can be dangerous when an untrained or improperly trained person is using the equipment. On lifts such as these, it is important to be sure to use pins or other methods to lock out the hydraulics.